Today I want to teach you seven strategies you can use to improve your effectiveness as a leader, a manager, a project manager, or a team leader. You see, as a leader, it's your job to understand each and everyone's strengths and weaknesses so you can assign the right tasks to the right people to achieve the best possible outcome. Now, while this seems logical, most leaders rarely take the time to reflect on their own leadership qualities. You see, as a leader, it's important for you to know your own strengths and weaknesses so you can determine when you're an asset or a liability to your team. And only then can you be an effective leader. So before we get started, only a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you end up liking this video, consider subscribing, it's free, and you can always change your mind. So let's dive right into my seven best strategies that will help you become a better leader and improve your ability to lead others towards success. Number one, be a great listener. Being able to tune out the noise and listen to your team allows you to grow. And this means listening with an open mind, without jumping to conclusions, empathizing with people before trying to solve problems. Instead of solving your team's problems, lead them to discover the solution on their own. I mean, if you tell them how, they'll doubt you. But if they discover it on their own, they'll believe in it. Consider how your mood affects your reactions. I mean, if you're screaming and yelling at your team when things aren't going well, then they'll lose confidence in you as a leader and your outrage will just inhibit your team to share the truth about what's really happening. Okay, let's move on to number two. Let go of the past. I mean, letting go of the past means to start thinking about what you want for the future. And the only way to get there is to let go of the past mistakes. Apologize where necessary and look forward. I mean, listen, leaders are people too and they make mistakes. But only the good leaders will recognize their own mistakes because they know that it's the only way to grow from them. I mean, you may have made some bad choices, hurt people or wasted time, whatever it is, but today is a new day and you can make amends with those decisions and regain the respect of your team. I mean, it's not hard. I mean, just take responsibility and own your mistakes. And don't blame anyone but yourself. And you'll find that other people will respect you much more for taking accountability for what has happened. Okay, let's move on to number three. Clearly communicate expectations. I mean, one of the biggest problems leaders have is the ability to effectively communicate their agenda to their team. I mean, you might say, you know, we're going to do this and this, and then say, any questions? And either your team doesn't know what you mean or worse, they think they know what you mean. And when they don't know what you mean, they'll just flounder and operate without any focus or direction or determination you know, whatsoever. But if they think they know what you mean, then they'll be motivated, disciplined and focused, but they might be going in the wrong direction. And that's why you as a leader need to get feedback from your team to make sure they understand your agenda. I mean, you can't just say, hey, raise your hand if you have any questions. I mean, you need to go around the room with your team or the Zoom conference or Teams meeting, whatever it is, and ask questions and get feedback from everyone that shows they're not only on board, but they understand what is expected of them. And only then can you lead your team to accomplish you know, whatever it is you set out to do. Okay, let's move on to number four, respect their time. And what I mean by that is if one of your subordinates tells you that, you know, he'll have the work done in a week, give him the space to do it and don't harp on him during that time. And if someone else tells you he's overworked and doesn't have the time to get things done, listen to him and find out how much time he does need, you know, but don't be the kind of leader that demands 60 hour work weeks from everyone because not everyone is in that kind of position to work at that level. I mean, some are, some aren't, but don't force everyone into that mold. I mean, some people, you know, who have families aren't capable of working at that level. So that's what I mean by respect their time. All right, let's move on to number five understand your strengths and weaknesses. And when it comes to being an effective leader, I mean, the secret is to know 
your strengths, and where you need to improve. And once you understand these, you'll make better decisions on where to invest your time in your own personal growth as a leader. Investing in yourself could mean taking on new responsibilities, finding a mentor, or even going back to school. You might even consider asking yourself some questions like, you know, what are my top five strengths? What are my top five weaknesses? How do I want people to feel about me when they walk away from meeting me? Or, you know, how would I describe myself as a person in three words? Or, you know, what are my best qualities as a leader? You know, what are the best qualities I think they are as a leader? Or even ask someone else, what do you think my best qualities are as a leader? Another question is, that's good to ask is, what goals do I want to set for myself so that I can be happy with, you know, where I am in life? You know, stuff like that. And when you take time to answer these questions and put some deep thought in them, you'll have a much better idea of what you need to do to grow as a leader. Okay, let's move on to number six. Improve your decision-making skills. Leaders don't hesitate when they make decisions, but they also don't make uninformed decisions either. I mean, don't fear being wrong, but instead weigh all possible outcomes and make an informed decision that poses the least amount of risk. I mean, it's okay to take calculated risks, but your decisions should be grounded in experience and risk. And lastly, number seven, take on new challenges. I mean, it's human nature for people to get comfortable with their current role, but as a leader, it's your job to seek out new challenges that are outside your comfort zone and try new ways of doing things. And this will allow you to grow personally and professionally and to evolve into a highly respected leader in your organization. And that, my friend, is all I have for you today. I hope you discovered some new ways to grow as a leader, but you know, maybe you've heard some of this stuff before. And if that's the case, then I hope this was a good review for you. I mean, for me personally, I can't just hear something once and then master it. I mean, I need to hear it again and again and again until I start applying it. And only then will it get wired into my subconscious so I can instinctively use that strategy in critical moments where I might need to make a split second decision. And it's in moments like that where a single decision is based on the culmination of years of experience and study. And someone from the outside looking in just might see it, you know, as a gas and say, I could do that too. But, you know, as a leader, you know, you know better. And that's why you're in that position. Now, I do have something for you today, or I'd like to introduce you to something today. Um, this is called the seven master steps to hiring A players. So, and I'm introducing this to you because as a leader, I mean, it's your job to hire the best people on your team. You need to be an expert at hiring the right people who are aligned with your goals and who are passionate about what they're doing and have that overall alignment with your team. And that's what this book's gonna help you do. It's gonna walk you through step by step how to build a job scorecard, um, how to write job descriptions, how to do phone interviews, how to find that alignment, how to find the right candidates who are just best for, you, for your team. And it's got a whole series of questions to ask candidates that will help you understand what their motives are and the experiences that they've been through. And like I said, if they're gonna be right for your team. It also goes into you know salary negotiations and a whole bunch of other post-interview um, testing and stuff that we actually like to call um, job auditions. So it's a great book. You can get this from the simplehiringsystem.com or I think it's even on Amazon too. So it's a wonderful book, easy read. Um, I think you'll enjoy it, especially um, as a leader, because like I said, it's your job to hire the best people. And I think that book will definitely help you do that. All right, my friend, that's all I have for you. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. And subscribe. I mean, it's free and you'll get notified every time I release a new video. All right, my friend, take care. We'll see you in the next video. Bye now.